Hello and welcome back to this new video on my series on Spacey for the purposes of performing DH. In this video, we're going to be looking at something kind of new. So in the last video, I showed you how to break down words to their core roots or lemmas through limitization. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to start to visualize our data, our text data using Spacey. What we're going to produce is something that looks kind of similar to what you were probably used to in seventh or eighth grade English, maybe sixth grade, where you created these sentence trees or uh, the ways in which words in the sentence relate to one another. So we're going to do that in Spacey. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to import the, uh, the uh, thing that allows us to actually uh, visualize data, and that's called Displacey. So what we're going to do is fr say from Spacey import display C, just like that. And now once we've got that imported, now we can start kind of working with our data. And in the last few videos, we've really looked at sentence two here, uh, all of this information. And in this video, I want to look at this sentence here. And I've already figured out that I need to type in number eight to get to that. Uh, and the reason why I'm picking this one is because it's a simpler sentence, uh, unlike this one, which means we can kind of look at more of it on one screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply type in HTML, I'm going to create an object here, and I'm going to say displacy.render, and I'm going to identify uh, two pieces or two arguments that I'm passing. One is the object that I want to have rendered, and that's going to be sentence, which is sentence eight here. And the next thing I'm going to pass is a keyword argument of style. And I have a couple different options here. There is DEP and there is ENT. I'm going to show you DEP first and then I'm going to show you a ENT. So what we're going to do is we're going to create essentially an HTML object to do this. And there's two ways to uh, create data visualizations in Spacey. There is one where you can use the serve function, which is going to create a local user computer as like a local server. So you can kind of just log in and see the, the data visualization. I, however, prefer to save my data visualizations. So I'm going to use the render option. And what this has done is it's essentially just created a large HTML file for us. So we need to save that HTML file. So we're going to say with open, we're going to say uh, data viz, uh, viz .html. Uh, we're going to make it, uh, we're going to make it a W so we can write to it. We're going to open it up as F and we're going to say F dot write. And we're just going to say HTML. And what this is going to do is it's going to create this HTML file for us. It's going to write all this stuff to it and save it so that we can open it up in a browser. So it's already done. And we have here, what you can see is a long HTML file. And if we go ahead and run this, or you just open it up manually, you get something that looks like this. Now, as you can see, I'm gonna zoom out. I have a fairly large monitor. Uh, you can see the whole sentence kind of laid out here. Let's zoom in though on a little bit and see what's actually happening. Well, what you can see is that we have all the words broken down individually in another moment down went Alice. So it keeps on going on with it comma never once, etc. So what's happening here? Well, underneath the, uh, the actual word, you are getting uh, the part of speech. So a ADP, DET, noun, adverb, verb, pronoun, uh, proper noun for Alice, etc. on down the list. So we're actually able to extract all that or see all that information here in this one visualization. But this visualization does a lot more. It actually identifies the relationships of words. So what do we see here? Well, when we look at the verb went, what do we see? Well, we see that went is connected to a preposition in, which is then going to be connected to another moment and then adverb modifier down. And this is going to describe the process in which uh, a went occurred. Then we also see the verb went being connected to the direct object of Alice. So what went? Alice went. And then what we see is that it's also connected to a preposition after, and it's also connected all the way over here to considering. So what's occurring here is you are seeing the relationship between words in a single image, a single data visualization method. Now, for me, I don't use this too often unless I'm trying to just get a quick look at a sentence that's kind of long so I can figure out a pattern and the relationships between words so I know how to actually work with it in a script. One of the things that I find more useful 
is the uh, the other option for data visualization uh, style, and that's int, E-N-T. And you'll see why in just a second. So I'm going to rerun this code. Okay, and you're going to see that my HTML file has now completely changed much shorter. Well, what does it look like? It looks like this. Now what we see is entity uh, NER essentially, entity named entity recognition. So what it's found and highlight it for us is a named entity. And we can see that that's a, a, a little different than what this looks like. These are two different data visualization methods that are used to perform two very different tasks. I recommend really thinking about what you want to do with your data visualization in Spacey and select the right one for your work. So what I've done is I have only selected a individual sentence. What is going to happen if I pass in an entire document? So this is going to do all of chapter one. It's finished. And now we have this all here. Let's run it. And we see the entire chapter now laid out for us in a single data visualization. We see it all in yard, essentially, all marked up. So instead of having to look at our data, in uh, static lines in Python, we can actually go through and see everything that is happening in one single image. And if um, again, I'm working with a fairly large monitor. If we zoom in, you can actually read it like a normal text. And yeah, this is what you're getting. This is one way in which you can analyze a text much more quickly than having to work with everything in Python to see what's being grabbed and why for a named entity recognition. So that's one thing that you can do. Uh, let's go ahead and just for fun, <laughs> I haven't done this yet, so forgive me for having to think about this for a second. Let's go ahead and look at every single instance here of our text and uh, all instances here in our text. I'm going to pass in the entire text of um, into this doc, and we're going to run this just to see what happens just for fun. So instead of looking at individual chapters right now, I am processing the entire text of Alice in Wonderland, and it's already done. And here you are, the entire text of Alice in Wonderland with NER markup, all done for us in a matter of a split second. And I did not even run this on the GPU. This was very quick. But you can tell how useful and how powerful this spacey visualization is. And keep in mind right now I am using the small model. If you use the large model, this is going to be more accurate. You're going to have a different result. But this is nice because you can look in very clear uh, visualization methods look and identify specific types of uh, named entities that are appearing in the text and specifically the tags that identify them. So if it's a person, it's uh, purple. If it's a place, it's uh, orange. If it's, uh, uh, sorry, if it's a work of art, uh, which is actually incorrect here, uh, it's going to be pink. Uh, ordinal is going to be uh, this grayish color, brownish color. My point is, is that, uh, sorry, numerical is going to be uh, that. My point is here that you can use this very powerful visualization technique to immediately recognize a whole bunch of important data right off the bat. And because this is an HTML file, because this is in CSS, you can easily import everything into your, um, into your website. So you can make a website about Alice in Wonderland and have everything marked up. You can start to manipulate the CSS to make the colors uh, reflect what you'd prefer to see. My point is the sky's the limit with this visualization method. That's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you found this useful uh, and are thinking of ways already to start to apply it to your own DH work. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below and visit us at pythonhumanities.com.